Welcome to the Genre Hustle, your virtual sci-fi fantasy writers group. I'm Anton. I'm Jane. I'm Chris. I'm Chelsea. And I'm AP. And today, Chelsea, we are talking about Act 3. The This is, as we've been talking about the last two seasons, three seasons, how long have we been doing this? Two seasons. Two seasons. This is season three. Season three. Like I said, we've been talking about structure. So we started very, way back in the olden days, opening uh, first sentences, first act. We were recording a incident. podcast, the tape. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's right, exactly. <laughs> these, were, these were originally chiseled into stone tablets. <laughs> uh, and so now we've come all the way down to the third act and what it yeah, means. Yeah, here we are. And here we are. So... I'm going to give it all over to you since you are our third act expert. Oh, God. I mean, yay! It's going to be great. <laughs> um, so I was, you know, I think I've said this before, uh, your guys' break into two episode before mm. I joined was is one, still one of my favorites. Genius. Like it's, yeah, it's great. It was a but, high watermark. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think we're going to kind of approach act three in the same way. Um, we are going to have separate episodes or maybe episode, depending on content uh for climax and resolution so what we're going to focus on is break into three and in a lot Mm -hmm. of ways break into three is going to reflect or contain some of the same elements as break into two um you know there's a setting shift probably uh there's a clarification of adversaries and allies probably evolution of your uh protagonist goal and then a renewal of energy or a transformation of the uh, protagonist. Um, or ideally, you know, all of those things. So uh, let's talk about when the break into three happens. When I can't write anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, right, Jane, I'm talk, serious. Talk this to is us. my biggest bugaboo. I'm so glad we're doing this because, Chelsea, I need help. Um, because I can write act one and two. Those are great. They're fun. They're full of ideas. And then I get to oh, crap, now I need to resolve all these plot lines, mm-hmm. make all the subplots pay off, and i that's where I get stuck the most. So help. We're, we're here, we're <laughs> here, we're here for here, you. We're, yeah, here we're gonna help you. So a, a lot of resources, like Blake Snyder, who will put Break into Three, or Choosing Act Three, right after The Dark Knight of the Soul, so... What's that? Yeah, what is that? Well, according to Blake Snyder... <laughs> <laughs> Um, and this is from his book. It's Save the, the point. Cat. Yeah, this is from. I'm going to read from his book, which I've done for our other our other yeah. structural yeah. Uh, episodes. Um, it's the point, as the name suggests, that is the darkness right before the dawn. It is the point just before the hero reaches way deep down and pulls out that last best idea that will save himself and everyone around him or her, Blake Snyder. But at the moment, <laughs> that idea is nowhere in sight. So it's the it's the lowest ebb, the lowest point, really. So like, what's an example of that in a story? So I think one of the examples that we've used early on was Star Wars, which I know is is not a, a book, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> but, but it's a good structure. But it's, it's good yeah. structurally speaking, structure. and I think it's it's very relevant. So in in this case, the uh, using the Blake Snyder uh, references, the Dark Knight of the Soul is for Luke, it's when Obi-Wan Kenobi gets killed at the Death Star. So now they have to, they're fleeing, they have to run into the Millennium Falcon, and they have to flee the Death Star. And now Luke has to take up the mantle. And that is the break into Act 3, because now Luke has to become the hero that he was always going to become. So his, you know, his want becomes his need. He now has to take on this thing. And the third act is the the rebels attacking the Death Star. Right. They have a new plan, a new new plan, plan. which is, all right, we we have these plans. We're going to take this desperate attempt to blow it up. Yeah. This one last gamble, this one, you know, this, this Hail Mary, if you will, to go and do this one desperate act um, with, again, Luke in the lead of it. So before he's been very much sort of kind of following or part of the action, but not Mm. the leader that he was or is now. Or will become. Or will become. Yeah, and then the other thing that we get is a narrowing of the antagonistic forces because the Death Star comes to them. And also Darth Vader personally gets in yeah. into the TIE Fighter, into yeah. Yeah. The tie fighter and, and comes and, after him. And it's, and it's kind of all the things that you were talking about, Chelsea, in terms of the setting shifts. So now yeah. we're in space fighting before we were always in a place. Um, and the adversaries and the allies are all coalesced. And we know who, like you said, Darth Vader comes out personally. Yeah, too. because like, like up up until that moment, Luke and Darth Vader, you know, like the, the titular hero and, and antagonist have no contact yeah, throughout the rest of the right. movie. This is kind of their first meeting. Um, and so I think just kind of 
going off, going kind of back into the structure a little bit, I, you know, the thing that we've always talked about in terms of structure is this, this idea of the promise. And so we talked about it early on is you have to set up the promise. And so now when you get into the, the third act, it's, you're now delivering on that. So I've been yeah. reading your book forever now because I'm so into it. <laughs> <laughs> And now I want you to do all those things that you set up in the first act. Yeah, I want so you to this s- is where, yeah, the theme is going to pay off. So mm-hmm. it's Luke's relationship with the Force, Luke's relationship with his mentor. And now the, the final conflict is going to pay off. It's Luke versus the Empire, the Rebels versus the Empire, Luke versus Darth Vader. And he uses what he learned from the B-Story stuff to actually mm-hmm. do the act. Yeah, so and the, he- yeah, and, and the B-Story with Han pays off because he comes back and saves the day. So it's like all these character arcs are, are coalescing into one moment. So kind of to your thing, Jane, when you're talking about like why it's the hardest thing, I I, I actually agree with you. Like it's very hard to, to pull together. <laughs> I'm not alone. <laughs> yeah, it no. helps to know that. Thank you. <laughs> because I know for me personally, the first book that I wrote in for NaNoWriMo, which was 200,000 words of junk. <laughs> junk. Yes. <laughs> but I was very clear about where I was going in the third act. So kind of, you know, sort of the Chelsea in me knew where the the last great battle was going to be. And I knew who was going to be in there. The problem I had was I didn't know how to get them there. Yeah. <laughs> but I think, I think if you're, if you're, if you're having trouble with the third act, I think p- part of that is you have to think about is you have to think, especially if you have a lot of characters is that how do you get them all pointed at this place in time? You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause I think they do have to all kind of come together at, Sign of the same place, kind of the same time. Yeah, but also, like, I don't think... It's important to remember that, like, you, it, you can start to strip away characters. You can... They can get injured. They can get killed. They can have reasons not to participate in this in this kind of final confrontation, which can make the resolution maybe even more interesting because now there's consequences um, as a result of this conflict. Characters who died, characters who stepped away, and then your protagonist has to kind of deal with that. So, you know, narrow it down. I think Act 3 is all about narrowing and narrowing and narrowing mm-hmm. so you get to a really explosive... <laughs> I know, listen to I know, like a, but, but, you know, an explosive final confrontation. Well, so is, yeah. you've, well, you've got all these threads in, in the first 40,000 mm-hmm. words of your book. Just go make a list of what those threads are and find a way to check off every single one. Be like, okay. It sounds so logical. I know. It sounds when so easy. When you say it, it sounds so logical. Build a spreadsheet, and Jane. Methodical. Yeah. That's right. We'll get a whiteboard. <laughs> For me, I think the the thing that, uh, that's diabolical about the third act is, and it is most important and most challenging, is tying the themes in at the end yeah. in, a, in a way that's satisfying. Well, but here's maybe you know your opportunity to do that, and it's called, or Martha Alderson calls it, the threshold after the crisis. So what is that, Chelsea? Yeah, so what is us. that? <laughs> Teach us, please. So, you know, we have the crisis and then there's that kind of transition and she really focuses on a drop in the energy. So this is an at, opportunity. at the onset of act 3. Right? So, so the drop of, of sorry, so the drop of energy, so this comes right at the end of 2, that's the crisis. That's the crisis and then boom, setting shift. Um, you know, the the consequences of the crisis have come have come home to roost. And so then you get a chapter or a scene or however long of your protagonist kind of digesting this and ruminating on the theme. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, it's like and, the calm before the storm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But like, you know, this is your opportunity to dig into backstory, even like uh, getting the ninth does this really, really well. I'm not no spoilers. Going, I'm, yeah, no, no spoilers, but her transition into act three is breathtaking. And mm. she just, she narrows Gideon's, motivations down to this one relationship and they just these two characters just come together beautifully and then the rest of the book is entirely driven by these two and this threshold moment is kind of this it's a chapter long kind of retelling of here's how we got to be here but with extra truth like extra truthiness (laughs) and uh (laughs) and so now like And it's like an excellent opportunity for us to like learn about the themes, learn about what the character really, really wants. You know, they think they go into a story wanting something. Luke wants to go to the Academy, the Imperial Academy. Mm -hmm. And then by the dope. Yeah. (laughs) But by the end, he's like, oh, here's what I really, really want. I really want to be a rebel. Um, Yeah. So for me, again, like that, that's the tricky part. It's, it's not even like having that moment is great, but making it 
somehow tie into the action at the mm, end. Mm -hmm. That's what, when I read a, a really good third act that's really satisfying, it always ties in theme as well as into the actual course of the actions. So like, for example, like we were talking about Star Wars, Luke shuts off the guidance system and uses the force, which is what he's had to believe, learn to believe in himself and believe in the force the whole time. And that's what does the trick and it's ties together so neatly yeah it really does but um you know maybe a way that you can get it to work with theme is to div is to work with like new skills or new tools that your mm -hmm. protagonist has as a result of the threshold and as a result and as a result of the crisis or using what was previously a fault as now a tool and an asset that's always good yeah, yeah that does work it doesn't hurt if the pacing picks up too yeah, well, yeah. That obviously, gallop to the end yeah, is always huge. Yeah, obviously, as we approach the climax, things are going to get faster and faster. But, you know, I, I, I really do want to emphasize, I was looking back on some of my own work, like, yeah, I have absolutely this kind of breath before before the rush to the end. And yeah. a lot of really important things can happen there. And I, I just want to emphasize, like, a dip or a drop in the energy right there right at the perfect place can really build towards a good climax. Well, yeah, that's the breath where they're gathering everything, gathering themselves, thinking about all that they've learned. Uh, and before we got on mic, Anton, you said they were reaching into themselves and finding that last bit of energy or hope or light mm -hmm, or whatever yeah. it is. Um, that's where they learn something new maybe and the, the, the plan changes. So that, that break into three is that, that pause in the energy before you go for that last sprint. Yeah, and screenwriting needs to call it the, the want becomes the need. So the character goes from wanting something, the mm -hmm, whole mm -hmm. character, the, sorry, the protagonist goes from wanting something, mm -hmm. the whole movie, to now they've recognized what they need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, the that's recognition of their need. Yeah, yeah. that's, yeah, very good. I th and I think too, like, something to keep in mind, like, it, when, when writing, like, a third act or whatever or anything, it's like, a lot of this can be retconned. Like, my experience, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, my experience is like, I sometimes have read something and I know what the final scene is going to be and I don't know exactly how it's going to get there. Blah, blah, I move everybody around in their little pieces and they show up at the end. And then it's just like, that's just how it is. <laughs> reading back over it. That's when like, like I don't have all the themes and everything neatly tied together. I'm learning from it as I re mm -hmm. as I go. And yeah. I'm like, yeah. Oh, that thing I sort of started in act one. And there's a little mention of it in act two. And then and like, that's gotta be there in act three. And so like, it seems like, you know, we talk about it like, oh, you just do A, B, C, and D, and E. And it's not really that neat. No, it's not that easy. <laughs> At least in my experience. <laughs> no. Well, and yeah, Act 3 is kind of a perfect opportunity to like mine your world building bullet journal with all the colored tabs or mine your past I I outline drafts. I know, I don't. <laughs> yeah. You know, Chelsea, I Chelsea, we just that. come over and write everything. I know. Down. No. <laughs> Give me a journal I have to write my book. Um, or yeah, like mine, mine your past drafts, mine old ideas, uh, ideas for other stories uh, to tease out and you know, find ways to like find tools that your protagonist can now have and find ways to like make your antagonist even more dangerous or even scarier. I was calling it off mic light rises and dark rises to meet it, which I was just like, yeah, that that's is, really good. Write yeah. that down, write that down right now. Um, but like, you know, coming out of that crisis and coming out of the threshold, like your, your protagonist sh should be pumped. Hopefully, you know, pumped as they're going into this final conflict and uh, your antagonist is probably going to be pretty pumped too. Yeah, because the, the idea is that the antagonist can still win here. Yeah. Well, uh, if you're doing it well, it, it should look like the antagonist will almost assuredly win. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, Even better, yes. You want to make it look like almost, I mean, all is lost is the name of the, the point that Blake Snyder says. So it's got to look like... There's no way. There's no way Luke it, can beat Darth yeah, Vader. There's oh, no way. No, like, yeah. It's all like everything's. And then that one thing. Let's keep in mind when talking about this too. Like I, I know Bears. You know, we don't necessarily have to say this, but like it doesn't have to be like a big battle at the end. That's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're talking right. protagonists yeah. and antagonists. We we tend to talk in these like sort of grandiose kind of yeah. Yeah, I mean, like in my end of my book, it's basically the main character coming face to face with. A computer-generated version of his estranged wife. Yeah, and that's mm. the and the antagonist. It's not they don't 
battle. You know what I'm saying? But like, no, but, but there's, there's a, a mental battle of battle. Wills. Yeah, well, yeah the, exactly. The but, drama yeah. is high. Yeah, drama well. is high. Yeah, yeah. And what you do very well is you boil it down to a singular confrontation. You've boiled it down to two entities. It's true. It's true. And that's that's what makes that climax good. Yeah, and we still don't think that the hero is going to win. I mean, right. we're, we're on pins and needles. That's why mm-hmm. it works. Yeah, to go back to what you were saying throughout the throughout Act One and Act Two, you you put in these things about. I mean, not to spoil your book, but about his wife, Fine. and that's not really the antagonist throughout the the right. book. It's so you you put in that theme, and then right at the end, that theme pays off. Cool, perfect, done, <laughs> well done, done. Take that, Jane. <laughs> Ouch! Wow. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm not hurt. I know you're not. I mean, not more than usual. <laughs> not more than. Usual. I just feel like we we beat up Anton so much. Somebody else yeah, has to take a blow once in a while. It's your turn. It's good. Um, there's a. I want to do a quick shout out to um this book that I just finished reading to help me. It's called The Last 50 Pages, The Art and Craft of Unforgettable Endings. Mm. Who's it by? Um, by James Scott Bell. Okay. Who has written a ton of very readable craft books, and I find them really easy to digest. Like he gets right to the point. Um, anyway, it, yeah, he sort of analyzes a bunch of different. He has a very methodical approach, so he analyzes a bunch of different types of endings and why they work. Um, so it's more of a diagnostic analysis tool, I would say. Hmm. Saying all the right for things, me, right? And yeah, <laughs> instead of like something for creative you know generation right. at least i don't think of uh, stories in that way but once i've written something um i sometimes need tools to go back and understand why it's not working um yeah yeah because so there's the like creative pass and then there's them. the like structural pass and yeah they got to come together yeah they do don't they <laughs> And it's hard too because when you, if you think about it, when you when you're writing the third act, you've already written so much of the book, and mm-hmm. oh god, and yeah. it's been so long since you've written. And you're so tired. Yeah, and you're, you're so, 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 so tired. tired. You're just like, what if everyone just dies? Yeah, exactly. I, you're what, like, uh, I don't know. The end. Yeah. What if <laughs> it could happen? So the, there, this, yeah. Well, this is kind of a time when the you know the path of the writer starts to mirror the path of the book. Like Ooh, you, oh wow, yeah, you gotta oh, get Chelsea. like you gotta get excited, and this is kind of what got me through nano like um i had such a cool set piece battle in mind for broken blades i was like i know what's gonna happen like the roof is gonna collapse and there's gonna be water and magic and oh it's gonna be great and it got (laughs) me through so much shit (laughs) yeah like anton was saying um in our care and feeding episode like store that little scene away and right to that Mm-hmm. Like eyes on the prize, right to the ending. So, do you, Jane, when you write, do you have an ending in mind when you begin? Um, no, but I have an end state. Like, I know what should have happened by the end. So, okay. I know where mm-hmm. the protagonist is going to end up. I know where the antagonist is and That's some of good. the subplot characters. But, like Anton said earlier, I don't know how they're going to get there. <laughs> and I don't know what the battle looks like, whether it's a physical battle or, you know, or to or Chris's both. point, or maybe yeah. it's not phys- or, or both. Right. right. So, so yeah. writers to authors.com, and I've talked about them before, have the seven plot point structure Seven or whatever structure, yeah. and they have this kind of step-by-step guide essentially for outlining your novel and they have you start with the resolution and they do talk about like where the character ends up where how does the world look but they also do talk about that battle so like thinking about that battle at the beginning and then you are writing towards it and yeah the middle can get yeah. murky yeah. and we and won't talk that. about the middle but Jane yeah. doesn't have a problem with the middle so you're good there well, <laughs> but so, a lot of people will say that if you have a problem with the end you need to look at the middle to fix yeah, it yeah because you you might actually be having too many loose threads I know I do <laughs> well so that, that's what I was gonna say so having read a lot of your writing at this point and I'm like, sorry Chris no <laughs> I mean Treat. never it's, apologize yeah. it's been awesome but like so for one thing you write a lot of short stories as well you have a lot of ideas like I'm constantly in awe at how many ideas you have. Like I'm like <laughs> I have one good idea every two years, maybe. That's you've got like twenty. Lie, you've got like twenty okay. stories a year. But so one of the things, that especially in um, you're calling it Snow and Ash now, the, mm-hmm. the latest one. When I read the beta read, was just the breadth of the book. There were so many interwoven threads and so many themes, and I think like that might be like one of the things that's getting you at the end is you have too much to bring together, yeah. and it may be a thing where like. I don't, I'm just 
spitballing to help to yeah please to come up with ideas but like instead of worrying about the resolution when you get to the end of that draft you know spitball it with a little mm-hmm. you know spackle it a together little, just a little spackle <laughs> but then go back and find the threads that you want to appear there yeah. in other words like instead of trying to finish the book in a like successful way like that's not the word i mean no, the I unsuccessful I, yeah, finishing yeah, yeah, yeah. in a satisfying like, way together. in a satisfying yeah. way maybe you just need to let all your ideas come out and then you need to go back and sift through them and pull out the ones that are working and then worry about the resolution. Mm. So maybe your resolution will come in a second draft or a third draft. I don't know. I'm just, I don't know. No, no, no. I think that's That's a great point. Thank you, Chris. Sure. Sure. (laughs) There you go. Just solved your problem. Done. Done. Episode done. (laughs) Do you feel confident now? Uh, No. (laughs) That, That face says no. So now that we've been talking about Act 3 a little bit, I mean, specifically for you, Jane, um, what are some more broad strokes things? You touched on this at the beginning a little bit, but what kind of things should you be thinking about in your break into 3? I always look for a, a setting shift because um, it it can kind of visually signal a change and then I can find new ways to present like new complications. Um, my setting shift for Terromancer into Act 3 is... Like there's a hospital and then there's the big scene at the port. And so now I have like, you know, fire and water and new physical challenges for my characters to try to get through. And it signals to the reader like, okay, things are coming to a head. I think it gets actually more difficult when you don't have a setting shift, like in Rat. I mean, Is there, there's a bit of a setting Yeah, but shift. you're like, you are still kind of dealing with like the same city. It's a it's siege same city, story. But yeah. it is a siege story and you go from you know, the, the main walls and the city to the fort. And then I, yeah. From yeah. The yeah. Fort yeah. Into I think the it hall. works. It's like, it's it getting, getting more smaller. And smaller. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's condensing. It's, it's, it's like a cone of yes. pain. Yeah. It's like, like a cone of yeah. pain. Yeah. Things yeah. are like cone narrowing. Pain, For the nice. characters. I mean. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. almost like things continue to narrow, continuing yeah, yeah. on the theme of the episode. But that, to that point is it's about the progression. So you've moved, you, the characters are moving through the story. And so there's a physical movement of some kind, meaning yeah. they've gone. And in the case of Rad, or even in the case of the anomaly, the characters are going to this other f- kind of final place or yeah. it needs to feel right. final one way or the other. Yeah, exactly. Um, I just finished reading a really great book called um, uh, Midnight Never Come by Marie Brennan. Mm. And there's a very subtle, there's a more subtle version of the setting shift. Um, it's a setting we've seen before, but so it's a book set in Elizabethan England with a mortal with a human man and a fae woman, and they end up sort of as unlikely allies working together. Mm. And humans are, you know, when they go to the fae world, they get messed yeah, up. Like they're not, out. it never works <laughs> out. Um, and in the final act, the thing that kind of, you know, sort of signals what happens is that the mortal man is is kidnapped and taken to the Onyx court where the, you know, the Fae live. And that's when we've seen it before, but only through the Fae eyes. Okay. And so now we see it from the, the man, you know, the human. Ooh, and okay. it's this really, you're like, Oh crap. And also now she is deprived. His ally is deprived of an ally and he's mm. in danger. So right. Stakes. Yeah. Right? Cause that's exactly. the other thing, right? Yeah. right? Yeah. Is stakes that the increased. stakes yeah. go up higher. And-, um, and I think that goes to the other earlier point that you were making uh, Chelsea too, this idea of this, the clarification of adversaries and allies. So to yeah. your point, Jane, even though we've seen this setting before, we're now seeing it through, I don't know if we're seeing it through a different POV, but we're definitely yeah. seeing, okay, so we're seeing it through a different POV. So now it's, this character is seeing it from, you know, from a different point of view. And now mm-hmm. it's, here's, here's a, it's a, it's the same scene, but it's shifted. Yes, yeah, absolutely. This is where we get to see like who the bad guys really are, or what, what the antagonistic force really is, you know, very clarified. There's often a reveal, like also yeah. often right before the break into act three, there's like a new reveal where the characters are like, Oh crap. That's yeah. what's was really going along. on. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, so like, I, I wrote, I wrote a short story indemnity for murder park after dark volume yeah. two. Uh, in my day job, I manage contracts for an architecture firm. So I wrote about the scariest thing I could think about, uh, a bad contract. <laughs> and, um, so, like my break into three is the main character 
discovering that the haunting that she's experiencing is a result of a really bad contract. <laughs> and so then and so then the beginning of act 3 is clarifying who the bad guy is and it's the property manager. Mm, it that, always is. That, uh, that jerk that who wrote a is. bad contract. And so now like the setting changes cuz like like the fire and the spectral smoke and stuff isn't scary to the isn't scary to the protagonist anymore. She's like, I know who's really, you know, I know who's responsible for this. I don't give a a shit. Um and it like the setting shifts because now it's there to scare the antagonist. It's not there to scare the protagonist anymore. And that brings up a good point because I think some of what I was thinking about with the break into three is that isn't that kind of where like the twist is? Mm-hmm. That's yeah. like where yeah. like the turn. maybe yeah. like yeah. the betrayal yeah. is there. Like you have an ally who that's turns right. into an antagonist oh, no. yeah. or right. like something like that. Yeah. So that's- yeah, and yeah, like a, a good a good betrayal is a great tool because now the antagonistic force is shifting. You lost an ally. Yeah. The antagonist is even more dangerous than you thought. And the now world they looks know all different. about you. Yeah. And the world looks, I think that's, yeah. yeah there so there's often like a perspective shift yeah, as well. Maybe not sure. literally, but like the protagonist understands new things. About mm-hmm. the yeah, world. The, yeah. For sure. hundred yeah. percent. This all sounds great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so See, Jane, it's all so, so much easy. fun. Easy. <laughs> I'll say it again, Jane. It's the third act is tough. This is really tough. Like, especially, You've written a gazillion words and you've so long and now you're like, I just want this to end. I just want to bring it all together in a meaningful, exciting way. And it's really hard because you've all, you know, you've set up all these roads and it's like, where do they all lead now? And it's super important. Uh, um, in James Scott Bell's book, he quotes Mickey Spillane saying, the first page sells this book, the last page sells your next <laughs> book. Oh, no Mickey Spillane would know. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I often worry about that with all the books I've sold. Yeah. <laughs> so I Someday. mean maybe that's a maybe that's an interesting point to talk about, you know, the last page or the resolution where you know, what are the consequences of of what of everything that's just happened? What are the unintended uh, unintended consequences of everything that's just happened? Yeah, uh, I mean we're going to have died? episodes yeah, on climax climate, and right? resolution, but those are definitely things to have in mind as you're writing, well first of all the entire book, but specifically the break into 3. Definitely have those in mind. Anton, you said something earlier about you know you're you're exhausted. You've wrote you've written you know a, a trillion words at this time, and there's a ton of drafts and all these loose threads. And where where is this road leading you? This road is leading you to like just like in the anomaly, a one a one to one conflict. So you know take if if you're not sure how to get into your act three. Maybe, you know, sit down and write that conflict out. Maybe as, even as a conversation between those two characters, what that looks mm. like. Or um, like a debate between them where, you know, they're just talking heads at this point. Because you, you might tease out some really interesting ideas as to how, you know, how we're going to get down to that final conflict. And what what's really at stake? What's the conflict really, really, really about? We might know, you know, you might go into Act 3 knowing who the conflict is between, but now you need to think about what the conflict is about. Yeah, it's it's about theme. I agree. Yeah. Well, so I think we did a good deep dive into Act 3. We'll have more on climax and resolution. But in the meantime, if you have any ideas about how <laughs> I can fix my <laughs> third act, please tweet me at Genre Hustle and let me know. I think this is our first like personal call just, out. Yeah. For- just, yeah. <laughs> Everyone I will give you credit there. in my <laughs> acknowledgments. Help Jane. Help, this is your big chance to help Jane with her third act. Thank Thank you. So that was the episode. This has been The Genre Hustle. Bye. Thank you for listening to The Genre Hustle. You can find us on our website, www.genrehustle.com, on Twitter at Genre Hustle, or on Instagram at Genre Hustle. Our podcast is available on all major streaming platforms, including YouTube. Be sure to like, subscribe, and send any feedback or suggestions our way. See you next time.